Welcome back. We're celebrating Canada's 150th upcoming birthday with a look at some notable Canadian films. And we're going to start with the slasher flick from 1974, Black Christmas. This really put Canadian cinema on the map. Made over $4 million at the box office, but had mixed reviews. It starred Margot Kidder and Andrea Martin and followed a group of sorority sisters who were being stalked by a deranged murderer hiding in the attic of their sorority house. Highly influential film. Uh, went on to uh, inspire movies like Halloween and was credited for originating the unsolved, ambiguous identity of the killer. Okay, another horror one for you, a psychological twister starring George C. Scott, The Changeling. I love this film. It was mainly shot in Vancouver, and its screenplay was based upon real events that happened in Denver, Colorado, about an unexplained phenomena inside a very creepy house. The movie is set in Seattle, but was mainly shot, as I say, in Vancouver and Victoria, and features a stunning performance from George C. Scott, and really plays up the psychological terror effectively. If you haven't checked this one out, I urge you to try and find it. Okay, the 1981 Canadian science fiction horror classic is next on our list, Scanners, written and directed by David Cronenberg. This is a crazy story about people with unusual telepathic and telekinetic powers. Cronenberg was dealing with a script that was unfinished, so he wrote it between 4 and 7 a.m. each day before going through the shooting process. There was no time to build sets, so the uh, production team had a real nightmare of a shoot on their hands, but widely regarded as a Canadian cult classic, 1981's Scanners. Gotta love it. All right, family drama front and center for our next one, The Sweet Hereafter. And it wouldn't be Canadian cinema without acclaimed director Adam Egoyan. This stars Ian Holm, Sarah Pauly, Bruce Greenwood, and many others based on the novel of the same name. Tells the story of a bus accident in a small town that results in the deaths of numerous children and a class action lawsuit. Inspired by actual events that happened in Texas in 1989. Not a box office success, but critically acclaimed won three awards, including the Grand Prix at the 97 Cannes. Film Fest, seven genies, including Best Motion Picture, and regarded as one of the top Canadian films of all time. Next, on Sandy, love this one, blistering searing drama from the great Denny Villeneuve. 2010 Canadian mystery drama film and it's the story of two Canadian twins who travel to their mother's native country in the Middle East to uncover her hidden past. There are some crazy twists and turns in this movie. Uh, in 2011 it was nominated for uh, the Academy Awards for Best Foreign Language Film. It also went on to win eight Genie Awards including Motion Picture and uh, this really launched the career of Denny Villeneuve who is doing the new Blade Runner movie coming later this year. Monsieur Lazar is our next one. This is probably my favorite of all of these. A 2011 Canadian French language drama based on a one character play tells the story of a refugee in Montreal who steps in to teach at an elementary school. And they basically cast an Algerian comedian by the name of Falag, who uh, did the title role here. And he does a great job with the heart and the drama, kind of mixing the interplay between those two. The film was nominated for Best Foreign Language Film at the Academy Awards as well, won six Genie Awards, including Best Motion Picture. And young Sophie Nelly was 11 years old. She tied for youngest genie winner in the history of the award ceremony that year. Love this movie. Uh, can't say enough about it. All right, we're switching to comedy now. FUBAR 2. Yes, you're wondering why I picked the sequel. Well, I think 2010's FUBAR 2 is superior to the first one. Basically, it picks up with Tron, Diener, Terry, and they go to the West Edmonton Mall. They get jobs at Fort McMurray and really kind of just try to relive their glory days. There is some real dark humor in this one that I love. There's snappy writing, great performances, and and it's really Canadian comedy at its finest as the hijinks ensue. All right, it wouldn't be Canadian comedy as well without Strange Brew. Cool, 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 cool. The 1983 Canadian comedy cult classic, Bob and Doug McKenzie, the characters made famous on SCTV, of course, portrayed by Dave Thomas and Rick Moranis. The movie also starred Max von Sydow. Uh, and in Wikipedia, it says, loosely based on the elements of Shakespeare's Hamlet. <laughs> the film was mostly shot in Toronto, Scarborough, Kitchener, Hamilton, also parts were uh, even shot in Prince George, British Columbia. And we perhaps saved the best for last, Meatballs. 1979, directed by Ivan Reitman, noted for Bill Murray's first film appearance and starring role and launching the career of Reitman, who would go on to do Stripes, Ghostbusters. It was followed by several sequels. Ivan Reitman or Bill Murray weren't involved with those, although in the um, third one, uh, it featured Patrick Dempsey as the young Rudy character. Yes, McDreamy. And this is a great family movie. It's perfect for summer uh, and is, is regarded as a classic as well in Canadian cinema. All right, so those are some of our picks. If you have any to share with us, drop us a line on Twitter at BT underscore Vancouver and let us know what you thought of these ones and any recommendations you have of great Canadian cinema.